coming up on this episode of The Brain Drain Show. Yeah, I met Jeremy. He, he said, oh, I've started a company called Deathbox. You know, just fancy being part of it, kind of thing. Barry Obrook approached me and he, he said, look, you know, it's some Zorlak stuff. But Jeremy sort of already had spoke to Barry about me going on Deathbox. Jeremy even did teapot wheels down to, might have been 39 now. <laughs> So reissues will be done exactly the same way as they were done originally. Jeremy sort of and Deacon invited Mike Manzori, Pete Hellicar, came up with different names and then finally Flip is the name. Definitely turned out the numbers in the thousand. I remember printing flip stickers in 92. I broke it and I've got it repaired and I've got two titanium bolts in there to keep it together. You can't hear yourself when you're skating it because it was so loud. Skateboarding never really needed the Olympics but I I think the Olympics might have needed skateboarding. Get kettle on. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another great episode of the Brain Drain Show. Toby's just been lubing up his lips for this one. It's one of his favourite skateboarders. Very special guest joined to our left, one of Toby's personal all-time favourites. If you would like to introduce our guest, Toby, take it away. Pete Dossett is here. Hello. Round of applause in the studio audience, please, for Pete Dossett. I, I didn't want to say you're one, you're one of my childhood heroes because I didn't want to freak you out and be all fanboy, but like... <laughs> you're shaking, so aren't you? No. Toby's like... It's funny. But, I mean, I mentioned to you earlier, like, when I first started in 88, all the mags, 88 to early 90s, you were on the covers all the time, Lo loads of photos in every single issue because it was yeah. skate action yeah rad skateboard mag we had three british mags at that point and you were like heavy presence in those yeah, mags. It was pretty time. mental it was fun mm. fun times yeah you know what I mean, what, one of the best photos you might have to dig this out fraser the stuff you had at nebworth you know where it's like sunset and you're doing the judo is it judo air in the the end of the snake run Fucking oh hell. yeah, that we were talking because, about that park earlier. Yeah, with because because that was local to me. Like I grew up North Hertfordshire around that oh, way. Okay, so I skated Nebworth before it got knocked down. But yeah, see if you can find them because there's 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 a few photos. There was one issue. I'm sure you had the cover. I think it was skateboard mag. God, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I'm doing the skate. I skated there quite a bit. Yeah, but yeah, there was an issue it's where you had like, you know a good good fun, good load of stuff in there. See if you can find it. Just do Nebworth Pete Dossett skateboard mag. I think it was. <laughs> There you go. <clears throat> yeah, judo air. Boom. Oh, contents page. That is judo, isn't oh, it? Oh, August as well. My birth. My, August my birth 1989. Year, my birth, well, no, I was 91. Birth that, month. That, that's at the end of the snake run, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it was a out. That was gnarly, well, wasn't well, it? Uh, had a doorway in, didn't no, it? No, it, it, it was a, a, a half pipe, but it was just no flat bottom, just, just yeah. like a half pipe like that. You. Just just and it, it just went down like and that. And out. Really good. That's where I, I learned mean, to drop in because it was smaller that you could work your way up yeah, and drop in. Yeah, I remember seeing that and being like, "Holy shit!" Like we were saying outside, how imagine if a park now was built. That that Nebworth one's the one that you mentioned on the yeah, greenery, we, wasn't it? The we, was that one we were talking about with Dan Cates as yeah, well? Yeah, Cates. Yeah, yeah. That park looks looks unreal. Yeah, it's. Um, you think it's still there if we dug it up? I think they smashed some of it up. I remember there was that article, wasn't there? And yeah. uh, Dicky. Had some photos there. Yeah, they, they put a car park on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, then, but we're not getting it back then. And then they put a mini ramp on it. They're like, here you go, skaters, have a, have a shit mini ramp. And we just cover up that. I mean, it was it was insane, that place. I don't, you know, used to be able to go to Stevenage, skate there, oh, and then you could rad. skate to yeah. Nebworth. That was hilarious. Two so. concrete parks yeah. of that calibre. Yeah. That close was just... Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, it was um, amazing. Yeah. Should, we wanna, should we jump into it? Yeah. Um, where are you from originally? Uh, originally, I was born in Hitchin. Fuck it. Uh, so you know the Thompson brothers, right? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. John Thompson? Uh, oh, yeah. I've had heard the it. ramp in his back garden. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes, of course, yeah. Oh, gee. Yeah, I went to his ramp about two or three times, I think. I didn't realise you were from Hitchin. Uh, well, I was born there, right. but then we, we moved sort of further into London. So we moved to, no uh, like... Barnet, and then from then on, right. went sort of in my teens, just kind of went north, stayed north, and then just sort of went from there, really. Yeah. And come back down, <laughs> as as I say. Yeah. Talk about my parents before. Yeah, yeah. Just sort of taking care of that. Well, one of my parents. Sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, sort of like that. Yeah. Hitching, that's funny, wasn't it? Custom Riders. 
Yeah. You sell death box to them. Yeah. Reg and Roz at Custom Riders. Yeah. I worked for them yeah. for a bit. Back yeah. in the day. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, they've gone out of business now. I think. Oh, they're, they're gone. You know, Mason, their son. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, yeah, it went out of business, but he's bought it back. And oh. I think he shares space with that. What's the skate shop in Hitchin? Is it TR7 or something? I think it's called TR7. He shares shop space with them oh, now. Right. Like back to how it used to be. Okay. And they were like the big BMX players back in the day. Yeah, those. Reg and Roz. Mm. Yeah, because they lived in Royston, which is kind of where I'm from, near Hitchin. Red one. Red one, that's it. So, the, yeah, they share space with custom riders now in Hitchin. <coughs> um, not not far, St. Neitz as well. That's, that's pretty near, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, all that kind of Cambridgeshire, there was, North there was, there was a ramp that got built there. The big vet ramp? I, I mean... Oh, years ago? Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that one. They built this metal thing there. Mm. And <laughs> it's just... I think you can actually find it online. You you can't hear, hear yourself when you're skating. It's it, it so loud. It was so loud. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Was that probably a rare, <laughs> rare unit used to make those metal ramps? It wasn't they? rare unit. It was oh, like no. a, a private thing uh, that this this guy, Ron Smiley, I think his name was, and yeah. he just built this ramp and we skated it and we like, you know, you know you, you're trying your best there, mate. Yeah, but it was, yeah, it was just um, quite comical then. But that was about 87, yeah. if I remember right. You said that was metal? Yeah. So it was like the metal sheets going... <laughs> Like yeah, banging. Yeah, it, it, it's sort of. It's, it's almost like one of the first metal, maybe metal ramps in the eighties. I'm not too sure. Mm -hmm. They might have built them in the seventies. Not yeah. too sure, but um, yeah. But as far as I remember, they had that, and then the bigger ramp at St Neitz. Yeah. And then Pete King put uh, his ramp there. He built a ramp there. Yeah. Yeah, because Stephen had the vert ramp as well back in the yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen some pictures of you back in. Yeah, back in it's a great, great ramp. Quite, mm. quite narrow. You know mm. what I mean? But I, I've mentioned it before on here, but like that was my local park. Oh, okay. We had like one bus from our town into Stevenage a week, so we go Saturday mornings, and it was just that vert ramp started getting ripped apart, just as I was sort of like the wheels were getting smaller. And yeah. it's like, I wish I'd got into vert skating then because it would have been good. Yeah, probably a bit earlier than that. Yeah, 92, uh, 92, I think around about 91, 92, the wheels just went to like almost yeah. 40. I mean, Jeremy even did teapot wheels mm. down to, I think it was 43 mil. Yeah. It might have been 39 mil. Probably. Like the smallest. And yeah. I think there's one company in the States that's been <coughs> 39 mil because that, Small wheels. Ryan that comes in, he's like, a 39 mil wheel's good. And I'm like, no. Well, I mean, what like, for? You, like, know, you got context is key with that, isn't it? Like, yeah. if you're skating the mega ramp with 39 mil wheels, <laughs> and that, yeah, no, you're they're not good. nowhere. <laughs> no, but, but I, th I think you could, you know, you don't need, well, it, it doesn't really matter, does it? I suppose it's, uh, uh, but at the, at the time, yeah, the wheels were just, yeah. Because like, they were really, they were like 63 mil. Yeah. Jeremy, uh, and over the space of two or three years, it went right down to like 45, yeah. 42. Yeah. And you could go through a set of wheels in like a session. Yeah. It was as soon as you did a nose slide, it so was just like this Interesting spot. times. I mean, to see the boards literally, but but kind of like all of our attitudes as well. Like, yeah. Was, we, we sort of warmed to that thing of, of just like, yeah, just to have a, well, that's the shape of a board, you know, rather than. Oh, I do this, that, and the other. You know what I mean? It was, yeah, it's kind of ironic. It's, it's gone back to that it's now. Really it? It's really weird. Mm. People have their own shape boards now rather than just a popsicle shape. It's like their shape. Um, what year did you start skating? Well, my first actual board was about 1980 or 79. Yeah. It was around then. And it was just a little plastic board from Portobello Market, would right. you believe? Yeah. Yeah. And just like. I remember skating it, but just messing about with it then. Um, and I first went to Harrow Skate Park, my old man took us there. And it was, I mean, it was, there was a shop there. It was all clean concrete. Yeah. It's like a brand new thing. So my dad just thought, yeah, come check this out. You got your skateboard. Oh, checked it out. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. But I didn't go back there for another two or three years. And then I went back and it was like, it was just, it was just like ap apocalyptic a bit. <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It was like, whoa, 
this a shop right <laughs> fence just walk in because mm. before it was almost like a you know you pay to get a leisure in. center kind of set yeah, up, it was it? just like and it just went from that to well that would have been after the first boom i guess wasn't it the, yeah. the late 70s early 80s boom yeah when it i guess it was when was it built harrow skate park 79 79. And Rumford was built in 78. And um, Stevenage was 78, I think, as well, wasn't yeah, it? Stephen. So that boom put all those concrete parks in that that area. I mean, yeah. we were quite lucky, really, having all oh, that yeah, yeah. Like, in that, in that yeah. zone. But yeah, it did. And then obviously during the mid 80s when yeah. it kind of died off. Yeah, it's just so, it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. know, like, but at the time, I, I, I got a BMX, but I had a bike. Mm. Uh, I had a grifter, <laughs> a rally yeah, grifter. Yeah. And uh, I remember messing about with that. And um, a friend of mine, I got a BMX, swapped it for a BMX. I was still quite young. I was only about 11, 12 sort of thing. And then I remember going back to Harrow with the BMX and messing about. I got into it. And uh, it was just hardly anybody skating. It, it, it was, mm. uh, you know. And then... Uh, an old sort of school friend of mine, Grover, hmm. Dan Costello, his name is. Um, he got he, he was skating, and and that was about eighty four, I think it was. And that's when I was, and I saw him at Harrow as well, and I sort of met him there. And uh, he said, "Oh yeah, you you want to try? You want to go skating? It? You know, did you try it before?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, years ago." He said, "Yeah, but." Bit older now, you know, it's mm. like a bit more savvy, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, let's give it a go. And I was like, this is so much better. I, I, I don't know, you know, on the bike, it just felt a bit safer, yeah. But, yeah, after a couple of slams, <laughs> at least, that, yeah, I was like, no, nah, BMX is just, yeah, I'm guessing uh, the second, like, it's just too gnarly, you know what I mean? And so, I, I couldn't really, and I'm guessing when you. Like you said, when you went back to it to actually skate it again, yeah. it wasn't on a plastic board. No, it would no. have been on a proper... Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. So it I just mean, changed everything. Changed the game. Yeah. And I, I mean, was like, oh my God, it just... That was it. Yeah. That was it. it just so what sort of year was that, like mid-80s? I'd say about 84. Right. I'd say 84, 85, and then sort of 86, I started... Just started to get into it a bit more. Get You know, like, just got knee pads, helmets, stuff like that, so... So you start, yeah, start losing was, it. Was there any more. mags around at that time? Uh, BMX action, I think. Right, and they had a skate yeah. section in it, in there, didn't they? Yeah. Is that the same one? Yeah. That was kind of a little bit before my time. But mm -hmm. um, when did you start kind of like becoming aware of like being sponsored and skate brands and, mm. you know, and, that, and you know, how did that start for you? I think it was 87. Yeah. Around about 87. Um, was that when you met Jeremy Fox first or? Did you get any sponsors pre death well, I sort of, I went to um, a, it was like a vert comp in Swansea. Yeah. At the Morpha ramp. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was an A and B group comp. And I just, I went down for the B group. Um, it was an amazing <laughs> weekend. Plenty of drinks and yeah. meeting new people sort of mm -hmm. thing. I was like, oh no, I don't got I've got I remember seeing him at Crystal Palace. And yeah. So by then, I'd sort of gone to Crystal Palace, <clears throat> gone to Romford quite a lot, gone to Harrow. Um, there was there was vert ramps that were built in Hartford, actually. Yeah. Um, the one in the woods. Or was that where? That's where. That's where, yeah. That's by Dave Allen. That, yeah, that, that was, was his he, thing. Yeah. And then Dave obviously built this other one um, in Berkhamsted, that's it. Or yeah. Little Berkhamsted, I think it's called. So I skated there quite a bit. So, um, but yeah, just uh, it, yeah. As, as, a, as I say in Swansea, um, Christ, it was uh, yeah. Just entered the B group, got into it. I, I'm not sure if I won it or Arwen Davis won it. I'm not sure. I haven't but, heard um, that name for a long time. But yeah, I, I, Barry Abrook approached me. I've yeah. seen him skate. It's, Unbelievable. So at, at the time, it's, it's still now, obviously. Um, was Danny Webster around then as well? Yeah, Danny Webster. Yeah. Um, him. Yeah, he was going off. He went out to the States. I saw him in a a vision video. I think he was in, on, on like, 
doing a run on the ramp sort of thing in a comp. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. It might have been Chicago Blowout, a competition. I met him at Leon C once. He sold me some New Deal turbine wheels. They had like proper aluminium cores in them. Oh, right. And like, <laughs> I remember getting them and I was just like, these wheels are far too big for uh, what I want to do. But oh, right. I'll have them because they're like five quid or something. They were crazy looking wheels back in the day. Um, when did you first meet Jeremy Fox then? Well, not well. It must have been about. The, it was the same year, so it was eighty seven. Um, yeah, I met Jeremy the same year, and then he he said, "Oh, I'm gonna, I've I've started a company called Death Box." Yeah. Uh, do you fancy being part of it, kind of thing? Such a good name as well, and yeah. it's Death Box. As I say, at the time I was. Barry Obrick approached me and he he said, Look, yeah, you want some Zorlak stuff? And he, mm. he just kinda just kinda helped me out and I was yeah. like, I was I was stoked and all that. Um and it was but Jeremy sort of already had spoke to Barry about about mm. me going on Death Fox. So <clears throat> so it was kinda like that and then just yeah, from then onwards, um yeah, just here go here, there and everywhere and <laughs> get yeah. involved yeah yeah you know? who was on deaf box at the time when he approached uh, you had he was he just approaching people saying i'm starting a company or did he already have like one or two he already solid had, foundations on the company well we already have wurzel and yeah mac uh He's yeah got his board haven't you the wurzel i've got board. the wurzel board yeah that's yeah. what i was saying about earlier that's that was my first Proper pro board, which ironically I email, uh, I ordered from Roller Snakes oh. mail order in 1988, oh. and I managed to get. It's not exactly the same stain. The one I had was <laughs> okay. a black stain. Yeah, but I've got one with mm. like a kind of teal stain. Teal dark green. Yeah, stain, it's, I mean it's it's used, but that's my kind of like that. I'm never getting rid of that. Like that is. You're still giving it to me though. You said get fucked. You're not even that. <laughs> That's the only one I'm like, <laughs> but I mean, like everyone that I skayed with in the late eighties, mm. everyone had deaf box boards, you know, like mm. whether Crazy. it was like the Wurzel boards or like the U-boat concave. <laughs> does it? And, Is that the one with mean? the tail that was? It was kind of weird, wasn't it? It was like, what's this? I mean, we'll go back to a, you know meeting Jeremy now, but <laughs> how did the U-boat concave come about? Because that oh, was something gosh. else, wasn't it? Is that where the tail's concaved itself? Yeah, it's like, it's V-tail. I, yeah, like yeah. That. I saw a on golf board a couple of months ago. And and they, someone <laughs> shot with that, and I was like, yeah. what the fucking hell is this? So the boards were just weird. Like it was so weird, but and back then you'd have a board for like a year. And, you know, and you'd ride them down to like there was no tail, and it just that was a bizarre feature. I was like, "What are you doing that for?" Like, what? Just, yeah, it's like, we just want to try it. Yeah, give it a go, can't they? That's what he said. I was like, "Yeah, um, but, yeah." So but I remember putting grip tape in in the gap, though. Yeah, <laughs> what to fill it out? <laughs> yeah, John did that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So you spoke to Jeremy, and he was he was putting together. The original death box. Well, uh, that's that's been his sort of thing. What know, did Jeremy do before death box? Uh, it's, he was um, working for Ford Engineering doing right. the indicators on Ford Transit. Right, that's what he was doing. And he just thought his last thing. Fuck this. <coughs> uh, doing the skate brand. And then he started working for Brand X. Yeah. Um, he did and some screen printing for Brand X, so he got he got he got a feel of yeah. Different he had terms. a bit of knowledge yeah. before jumping into making a company. At least. yeah, I mean yeah. Sean Goff was on Brand X at that point. That's right. Yeah. So he left Brand X to, to go to Deathbox. Uh, or, or did Brand X go? I'm not sure how that that tallies. Yeah, maybe ask him if he's yeah. We'll get him on at some point. Mm. Yeah, I think there's. Uh, yeah, we're there's, trying to we're yeah. trying to get Sean on Sean Goff. Yeah, I know you're watching these because I see your comments on YouTube. (laughs) Get on the show. We got some stuff to talk about. But the first ever skate shop I went into, Phase Seven, when it was Eater Joe's, it just had Eater Joe's on the sign outside. I remember going in there. The first board I saw that kind of took my eyes, took my fancy, was the Sean Goff little baby's board, and they've reissued them now, haven't they? And the guys at Brand X emailed me the other week, and they're like, "Do you want any?" And I was like, "I kind of do, nostalgic reasons, personally, but." Are they on OG shapes? <clears throat> I think they are, yeah. They look. Oh, yeah. They look yeah. The, yeah. like they did. It's always worth getting them, but reissues now, they're like... <clears throat> a, 
Um, how much are they going to retail? Like hundred and something quid. Yeah, they're I mean, always by the time expensive. You, yeah. oh, by the time you ship them in with import duty and taxes and stuff, they're always expensive, hey, aren't they're they? Not cheap. But then you know the type of people who are going to be buying them, it's kind of our age, isn't it? That remember them back in the day. Mm. It's not going to be, or the, you know, maybe Sean or or, or Brian here. You know, I like want kids who are really into that. Era. I want to start getting limited reissue boards in and skating them to annoy people. Yeah. You know, like how are you skating. <laughs> Yeah. How are you skating that? But yeah. Wait, hold on a sec. We need to talk about who's sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Who is it this week, Ford? It is Calm Club CBD. You mean the CBD gummy company that's been featured in the Daily Mail, BBC, Daily Express and Cannabis Health magazine? That's right, Toby. They make the best CBD gummies available because they're vegan, they use all natural ingredients, GMO free and comes in 100% recyclable packaging. Also, as I'm getting on a bit now, and due to its anti-inflammatory and analgesic properties, it really helps my post-skate recovery and provides pain relief for my podcaster's knee, which is a real-life thing. I've heard that some studies, that's right, I've actually read up about this. Done your research. Yeah, I've done my research. That some studies even show that these help alleviate symptoms of ADHD, which we all know I have pretty heavily. Well, Calm Club make it super easy for people to try their gummies because they do a little sample pack for nine ninety nine, and they also do a monthly subscription to make life as stress free as possible. It's a good day to be you, our listeners, because we actually have a hookup for you. Make sure you head to CalmClub.io and enter Brain Drain at the checkout for fifteen percent off. Fifteen, one fifteen percent off. That's five percent more than ten. That's C A L M C L U B dot I O. Use code Brain Drain for fifteen percent off. You can check them out on Instagram at underscore Calm Club and share your CBD experiences. <coughs> There. Ford, it's back to the show. Back to the show. Oh, uh, back to the, Deathbox. Well, yeah. The, the differences between reissues and what other companies are doing there, they're sort of they're doing their reissues, mm. but for Deathbox, we want to do it because obviously Jeremy's in America. Yeah. Um, he wants to do the reissues, how they were done, and get the original wood. From the yeah. original supplier, yeah, and and do it all here by hand, yeah, because you me guys, as well included, yeah, how, good. how it was done, yeah, because you guys did the yeah. screening, didn't you, with yeah. the boards? So the boards would well, be Jer- Jeremy pretty much did nearly every board, yeah, because he just couldn't rely on anybody to, <laughs> yeah, if you want, to, <laughs> if you want to <laughs> done properly, it's not. In fact, sorry, not rely. It's more trust. It's it's that yeah because. You wreck one board, okay. You wreck two, okay. You may as well wreck them all. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? If you can't screen print correctly. Well, yeah. he knows exactly you... how he wants it done. So he, yeah. w- he well, wants to yeah. be there and do it yeah, himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, the whole, t- I mean, most of the time I was there, you know, helping him and stuff. So. And that yeah. was in Wellingborough, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, on Rune's Nine Club, he talks about it when he used to come over. <laughs> yeah, and Rune would come over. Yeah, and the yeah. guys would be <laughs> screening the boards and then you'd take them to the shops. Mm. Sell them in the evening. And oh, get some I, I, I did a load of stickers and yeah. um, got somebody else to do T-shirts, got yeah. somebody else to do bits like that. But the boards were his, like, yeah. that's like, no, we've got to do it. So reissues would be done exactly the same be... way as they were done originally. You, I mean, you, you're obviously aware so of the, the amount of that, interest that, that it, would, it would get. Yeah, of course. Because yeah. yeah. on, on uh, SCUK, every, you know, whenever it comes up, I mean... Those guys would lose their minds. People would lose their shit. I mean, I I would have every single one of them for a start. You yeah, know well, I mean, pretty much. Oh, same here. You know, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, cause I mean, the graphics were something else back in the, the day. They, it was too short a time. Yeah, it's just it was the window was too short. It's a shame. It's a shame we didn't have enough time. And and you know, people like Roller Snakes helped yeah. Jeremy out at the time. You know. Yeah, like I said, you in the so, way here, like. We were one of the first shops yeah, exactly. that were stockists yeah. of Deathbox back in the day. And we'd stock it again. Oh, I fucking love to. You mm. know, we were I'd we were it. saying we were saying outside that the Deathbox graphics are they were all like mad circusy, mm. kind of like real, colourful, bubbly, real artistic graphics. People try to copy that now, but the Deathbox I ones mean, are amazing. They were really intricate to screen print those boards. Must have been oh, a, yeah. lot of a lot of colour. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's my no, boy, I don't think my nine. boys board's here, but we had it knocking around. You can it's see nine. the amount it's of the most. like work that's gone into getting that lined up and that. I always remember, like I was saying, like when I got my board in the post from Roller Snakes, I remember getting it like you know, like first pro board, and there was like a smudge on the ink, and I was like, "Fuck!" 
Mm. So upset. Like really, put, <laughs> yeah. But you look at it now, and it's yeah. like we were, oh, we were talk. I don't I can't remember who we were talking to. Stu, Stu at Love and Skate about mm. screen printed boards. Now people are prepared mm. for there to be slight imperfections, smudges, and imperfections yeah. because it's made the, by a person. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, like yeah. Stu at Love and Skate, I'm sure you know some of the Love and like Love and Skate stuff. Like you screen print a board when you get it compared to a heat transfer, you look at it and you're like, wow. Oh, like yeah. you can see all right. the separate lines where it's masked and yeah. just means a bit more, doesn't it? So get Don Bryder to make all the stickers. Oh, Donny has amazing. to be included in it somewhere. I'm done with his big fringe. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Back when you were doing the screen printing of the boards, what was the circulation like from what you remember? Like how many boards were getting made? Well, there was a period where I wasn't there when Jeremy... Jeremy was doing the boards, yeah. etc., and that was like he definitely turned out the numbers in the thousands. That's yeah. for sure. Mm. But over a, you know, it took must, well, it definitely took a long time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. to get that all going. Um, but as I say, you couldn't you couldn't trust. He, he got somebody in, this guy Scott, this American dude, <clears throat> and he he just sort of he ended up stealing loads of gear and all the rest of it so yeah yeah um and how many boards yeah, were you it, getting as a rider for death box was it just whenever you needed a board you yeah could? it's just kind of like that i was it was never a case of uh here's a box of 20 yeah. you keep you going. <laughs> yeah. no it was, it, it was more about just trying to use as less as possible with yeah, anything yeah. do you know what i mean i think it makes it more for, sense to <clears throat> get a board if you need one Rather than yeah. expect five boards a month because yeah, you, know, you don't yeah. go. Some people don't go through five five boards a month. It was quite know. different then, though. You know, yeah, sort of. Uh, they lasted longer for a start. They, they lasted they? longer, but it was like it just I don't know. Um, it just uh, just res respect for it. I don't know. You know mm. what I mean? Well, mm. you were there seeing it. How long the process was, and the cost involved to get a board there. Yeah, it was from America, and then screen printed, then yeah, sent to the shop. So you're like appreciative of that process and not taking the piss of it. But yeah, yeah. I always remember getting um, Death Box Whirly Birds, the wheels for Christmas. Being well stoked on that. Mm. Yeah, the graphics were, uh, on those were sick as well. Yeah. Aren't they? There's still quite a lot of those knocking about. You see them popping up yeah. quite often, but and dodos, dodos and Whirly Birds. But they, they were they were, they were chunky wheels, weren't they? I think sixty three mil. I those mean, were the bigger ones, weren't they? And then whirly birds yeah. were slightly smaller, but still they were like fifty eight or maybe even more. I don't know. Mm, but, yeah. But I mean, you know, for somebody, you know, like I was really into it at that stage. It was like Def Box or Santa Cruz or Pal, which was way more expensive. So we, we were doing this the other day. I, I can't remember if I asked you about it, but you could buy a Def Box board for forty quid right. back in the late eighties. And that equates to, I think it's with um, inflation, it's about 220 quid in today's money. Right. Yeah, because like, Mike asked me and I said, yeah. oh, 120? Yeah. But no, 200 plus. That's how much like things are now. It's mad. <laughs> so people are moaning that boards are going up from like 65 to 85, but they should have been going up for a long time. It's only in the last couple of years yeah. that it's gone up. Yeah. So that just goes to show that the, the skateboard industry... Yeah, keeps it real rather yeah. than the corrupt industry. There you go. Mm. Outside. Yeah, you know that that's how it's always been. You'll always find your next skateboarder next year will be the next person will yeah. be the next better person without yeah. sounding too much of a an yeah. arse, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you get you'll get more of a thing going on with a skater rather than a <laughs> yeah. just a normal kind. You know yeah, I mean? rather than just the skater being a yeah, part of their brand. I and tend to find that most skateboarders. Yeah, they like to do a lot of things, you know. Yeah. What I mean? Especially, well, myself, I've I, I've been painting skateboarders mm. for the past five years now. Yeah, thing. yeah. We'll come back to that in a bit because yeah, that's, that's yeah. really interesting what you were yeah. showing me. Um, just to, while we're on the death box thing, what year did you turn pro, and what was your f first graphic? It was eighty nine, yeah. and it was the punch graph, uh, the cherub graphic. It was right. a cherub. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Graphic that Jeremy Fucking did. Fucking that board is good. And, it was, um, and that shape on there, because yeah. it had quite a defined kind of like Yeah, notch. nose. We've done a notched nose on it. Right, okay, so of, you designed that shape as you, well. Yeah, we kind of like, it, it, it was just 
literally just again experimental yeah. mess, but messing about really, really, because um, yeah, it was it, yeah, it was quite a strange one, because after that it it, it was only around for months that yeah. shape if I remember mm -hmm. right, and then it just and then you had another one yeah, but it was just just sort of a, a just kind of like a I think it was nine and a quarter size yes. Yeah. But a pretty sort of standard kind of shape. If you yeah, that graphic's sick. Can you Google that? I just want to. <coughs> yeah, sure if we can get it on the screen. Have you still got one? The cherub one yeah. I haven't got. I've oh, got I the punch one. That. Right. I've got the first original punch one. Yeah. There's got to be someone yeah, in a skateboarding collecting group oh, that has be... one. Yeah, it's just somewhere, but yeah. they want a grand. Oh, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, no, they want, want more. A grand for it. <laughs> I think they want yeah. more. Third one in. Were you getting paid royalties on the boards being sold? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we made some money. It wasn't like, you know, you know you're not going to retire kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was all about the travel, the fun, the madness. Demos. Getting in the van. Yeah. So who was in the van then when that all started? Everyone. <laughs> Pretty much everyone got in that, van, that transit van. Yeah. Jeremy got his transit van. He was all stoked with it. And uh, just toured as many places as we could. Do you know what I mean? Picked yeah. up people on the way. Because mm -hmm. uh, so there was a few European riders in there, Jocker Olsen. Yeah. Uh, who else? Who is it? Nor Mark, uh, Mark time, van der Ring? Yeah, yeah Mark van der Ring, obviously. And who else was there? Europe we got. Nordine. That's it. Great Bay. Yeah. Because um, it was a real yes. kind of, although it was UK brand, it was had a real heavy European yeah. Euros, tone to it, you know, to... Euros, well into it. And obviously yeah. Rune was in, in the van. Yeah. And, yeah. And Andy Scott as well. Yeah. And Scotty was going mental. Mm. He was starting to get going mental around about 89. Yeah. Eight, he only 90, ever 90. had to buy one board, didn't he? Because he got sponsored so young. Yeah. That's fucking insane. <laughs> Who's I mean, that? Andy Scott. I'll show you what I thought. Well, Andy Scott only <laughs> bought one board he only before, had to buy he was... one before he got sponsored. We need to get Andy Scott on as well. He needs... He's really good. But yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy's always had like a good eye for like the European dudes yeah. as well. We were saying on an earlier podcast when it went to flip and that first video came out, the fact that it was all a British and European dudes. Mm. That's what video are you talking about? Flip, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I mean, that's, that's a lot later on. Yeah, I know, but we were saying <laughs> on a podcast, weren't we, like the fact that he got so many good British and Europeans to dominate an American market at that time. Yeah, how, what like, was the... Because um, you guys would go to Munster and stuff, wouldn't you? Yeah. What was the reaction from the Americans at that point? about anyone outside of America it was being a, out of competition. Because it was a heavy sense, British team. Yeah, they, they sensed all what was going on. Yeah. But, but they, were, they were loving it, you know. Yeah. Most of them were just like, I don't know, just, uh, yeah, the, the way that the Americans and Europeans were I get, uh, with Death Box, yeah. absolutely fine, you know. It's just, they obviously could see something was, something was growing, yeah. you know what I mean? And something was bubbling away. Yeah. You know, and then obviously not long after me, I sort of because I, I I busted my knee, and obviously Rune was going yeah. going ballistic, Andy was going ballistic as well. Rune, aka one of the politest, nicest skateboarders <laughs> you'll ever be around, and that, sort of at that point, that's when uh, well about ninety three, that's when Jeremy went to the states, managed yeah. to get Tom out there. Um, when did you first meet Tom? What was oh, your first kind of impression? Oh, we we love oh, a penny was, story uh, on here. I think it was at Oxford on the little ramp. Yeah. Skated with him there. Yeah. So I used to, Who the fuck is this? <laughs> this is good yeah. shit. Like <laughs> what am, what am I watching? Like yeah. even on Haslam's episode, he yeah, was like, so, Oh, Tom Penny. Yeah. Like just right. every skateboarder. <coughs> we talk about it all the time. It's so hard to put into but, <laughs> perspective. And context, how mind blowing Penny was yeah. when he came on the scene. To you can't compare it to anything really these days because it's yeah. no one's had that effect. Yeah, that he, he just he had. He was amazing. He come, he, he travel out to Germany with us, and uh, and it would be like like he just tra tra if you got any doobie, just because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a few times we did get stopped on the way back, you yeah, know, because yeah. we're coming back and. Tom would manage to pick up a bit of flavour on the way back or something, yeah. or whilst he's there, or, or, or however, whatever. And um, but the whole time he was, he was super mellow and just yeah, you know, 
he just started building up just by about 95. Yeah. That's when he was going absolutely mental. You know what I mean? Did you... Um, so they went out to America 94-ish, wasn't it? Was it the end of 93, 94? Yeah, about 93. Yeah. So at the end of 93, Jeremy got out there. And then, as I say, I was going to go. I just busted my left yeah, knee. Yeah, so that, that like, got in the way I of was you like, going out there. Yeah, I was... You know, Did you I, end up going I, I ended there? up going out yeah. there a few years later. Just yeah. stayed with Jeremy. Met everyone else out there, sort of thing. Half of the team, sort of thing, yeah. again. What was And the, some of the new team. Yeah. And all that. What was the main reasoning for him going out to the States? Was it to take... Take over. Was it to take his company? <laughs> like, well, Did he go out there just to visit and see like what was uh, going on? And then he was like, no, I'm going to take Flip. Or did he real, go with the intention? No, of like, the, I'm real, the real... The real... The real... I had to take with the intention because... You couldn't, I think maybe today he could probably come to England and... and um, you know, get it going sort of here, but I reckon there it's... You had to be in America. You, you have to yeah. be, you had to be there to, to make it, you know, to make it solid and yeah, to sort of... Have it's, the it's kind of logistical back yeah. end of it. As well, yeah, because that, that's, that's something that uh, Jeremy was sort of on about as well mm -hmm. in England, yeah. Your shipping and all that mm. kind of, like you say, logistics. And the market and here is like Tiny. so small yeah. that you're only going to yeah. stay floating at a level, whereas America, you've got the option to go more American and worldwide after that. See, I didn't realise until I listened to Rune on Nine Club, but mm. Tony Hawk and Pearl Linda, they, they helped out Jeremy, didn't they, when it moved out and it went into Yeah, that's right. And that's right. Yeah. They, they were basically the, the, the hookup with the distribution and getting it out there. Yeah. So, I mean, Tony York just shows, again, what a massive OG. Yeah, Jeremy went like. straight into Birdhouse. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, Tony obviously must have seen, oh, yeah, knows like, what he's doing. Yeah, he knew something <laughs> was going on. Yeah, yeah, he's got an eye good. for it. He knows what he's doing, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Um, where where did um, Ian Deacon come into all this? Because he was doing Bash for a time, wasn't he? Through Deathbox well, and then. Well, the the, the Deathbox and Bash yeah. was sort of a bit of a, a, a just sort of basically used the flip name. That's yeah. it. And yeah. Just go with that, and um, Deacon obviously takes care of the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has done. The whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Because <coughs> he's back in the UK now, did you say? Oh, I heard yeah. he lived in Hastings. Yeah. So yeah. Because yeah. he, he's keen to come on the show at some point. Yeah, I'd love to get him on. I mean, yeah. I've got a lot of questions for Deacon. Oh, God, yeah. I've never met him, <laughs> but I'd love to sit down and grill him about stuff and have a good chat with him. Yeah. But he's funny, Deacon, because he's like one of those, everyone knows who he is. And you always see him at any content, any like video of a com uh, competition yeah, yeah, yeah. with Deacon in the yeah, background yeah, watching yeah. over everything <laughs> keeping an eye on it like any new people coming out he's, uh, he's Bad one of the, <laughs> the dark lords of skateboarding so um, what do you talk about now? So what year did Deathbox properly change to flip and make that transition? 93, 94 isn't it I think yeah pretty much yeah. But, but I remember printing flip stickers in 92 right so it was on the on, on the, the on, yeah. cards. And, and where, of, you know, just trying to make them. Yeah. Um, and where did the conversation start about changing its name and its direction? Like going from Deathbox to Flip? <sighs> well, Jeremy sort of, and Deacon, and half of the team, um, sort of basically just thought about, we came up with different names. I think, I think if I remember rightly, Mike Manzori, Pete Helicar. Um, there's a few other people that were sort of invited to sort of hear and check it out, if I remember right. Now. Yeah. Vaguely sort of remember it. And, and then finally, yeah, Flip is the name sort of thing. Because mm. there was early Flip ads in, fucking hell, System Magazine. That's nice. I remember. I that was, I thought it was three. earlier than that. Maybe three. Maybe. Might be 93. That's yeah. what I mean. I think it's 93. As I say, the end of 92, I remember printing flip stickers. Yeah. Before it took off as yeah, flip. It's like mm. a, an F like that. And yeah. It's really simple, sort of thing. And like, but I knew it was right. I was like, it's, you know, all of us, it's, you know, mm. it's really weird. Like it's a name that works, isn't it? Yeah. Like it worked. Yeah. 
I mean, fucking hell, when he went to America, went mental, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Tom just, just you know, shut down a lot of places. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But was it? Yeah. Who was it? Oh, oh, yeah. I remember Dickie coming back from California and he mm. just brought back bags and bags of <laughs> Tom's old etnies. Oh, okay. Like bin liners full of them. And he had like bin liners full of wheels, like right. 50 mil white wheels. He's like, yeah, Jeremy gave me these to sell. And like just we'd, a Pioneer, we'd be at Pioneer and he'd just be like, oh, Pioneer, I can't remember the yeah. size of the shoes, but if you were that size, you've got yeah, an there you go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from Tom Penny's feet. <laughs> Was it on Rune's Nine Club where he talks about Penny at the, what what gap was it that he switched front side Carlsberg. flip? He says like yeah, he went it. there and like in true penny fashion he was like oh, it's not that Switch it's not, not that bad no, no film or photography and yeah and then he went back and did it third go mm. and he did that it just shows what level we we go in circles talking about penny but like you look at all the old etnies footage and stuff like that yeah I'm everything sure. he's doing over that handrail down the kind of like alleyway in the school. Wasn't he on like, mushrooms then as well? Like when he does the switch flip and oh, I'm not sure. The switch front side flip. I, I think I've not heard sure. that. Like, <laughs> high on mushrooms. Good but luck. that's the thing with Penny. Everyone's <laughs> heard something, yeah. and that's he's why like, he's like he's like mythical legend, isn't he? He's just you know he's been in a music video recently. Has he? Found it on his Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's yeah. like he's like be like water. That's Bruce Lee, and he's in like this Spanish rap oh video, and he's got like amazing. glasses on with that? a cap. Yeah, I need to see. No, that. I've got it. I've got it on my phone. Oh, that um, sweet. How did you find it? Was it on? I went on his. Or? I went on his tagged. On oh, his amazing. tagged. Um, oh, good luck to him. But when it opinion. when it um when it went out to the states, you said you visited. Was yeah, there anything but it was there? A few years later. Was there oh, anything there like you were gonna ride for it, or did you no. entertain the? Oh, idea? absolutely no, Ryan. No, no, no. I was quite happy. I, I'm. I'm not like. I don't know. Just, I think I, I was quite happy with what happened with Deathbox and that, yeah. and, uh, and that's it. You know. Yeah, you definitely happy made see, your mark. Yeah, on, it was on, just on, like, yeah, like history yeah. I, I can game. remember saying to Jeremy, you know, like, you know, I, sort of. I don't. I don't need to have a, a pro board yeah. sort of thing. It, yeah. it was a time. I think the last board he'd done was um, uh, a Fantastic Four character with the rubbery arms yeah. sort mm -hmm. of thing. And uh, he made that and sold a f few of them and and stuff. And but he just wanted to do it. I think he just he just loves to create a, a, a kind of almost like a character for that person. Yeah, you know, so. yeah. But as I say, after that point, I was like, well, you know, just I, I, I don't, you know, give somebody else the opportunity to have a pro. Yeah, he said that earlier. Yeah, you know what I mean, like. And, um, Which is quite a humble thing to do. Because, well, I, I wish I wish more pro skaters would do that. Like, do you know what I mean? You just yeah, you know, your times. Let have a little um, window of a few board sales. Yeah. All right, mate. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. You know, don't need to capitalise. You know. So, do you speak to Jeremy quite often? Oh, about a month ago. I spoke mm. to him. Next time we speak to Jeremy, just mention that Roller Snakes is 40 years old next year. You know, as a 40th anniversary, Roller Snakes is 40. And also, yeah. here's all the death box reissues that everyone's been yeah. fucking losing their shit about trying to get for the last yeah. I 35 have said, years. I've mentioned it to him every time I've yeah. spoken to him. I say, you do realise that I'm getting messages on yeah. Instagram. I see it all the time. Texas and mm -hmm. I'm in the skate park. The first thing it to come up to me, oh, oof. And once you realise who I am, and then they go, I oh, reissues, and, mm. and the yeah, the conversation just is constant. <laughs> it's constant. And I bet it has been as well for years, isn't it? Yeah, people want yeah, to see has. those boards. Like you know, there's one guy on SCUK. I can't remember his name. I think it's Damien something. He's got a lot of Def Box boards, OG uh -huh. ones. Seems to trade them quite frequently as well oh, okay. into Europe and stuff. But he's got a good. Right. Good selection. I'm assuming Jeremy's probably got yeah, copies of the shapes. He's got one of each. Yeah, so he knows, you know, can get the exact same mould again. Use all the same colours. Fucking hell, I'd lose my mind. He's already losing his mind. No, I'd have one of everything. Uh, you know, and if they came in multiple stains, I'd have to have one of every stain. Just to put on the wall. In a, in a dark room. And just <coughs> go in there and just sit there going. <coughs> I came across, I don't, I don't know where I came across it. I mentioned <laughs> fucking Don Brider earlier, but there's a video of him like, doing a lean to tail on a, on a ramp and then he slides out and there's the teapot on the bottom of the ramp and he's hitting it 
and he's going death box and he's like praying to it like and everyone's that's, that's like in the Isle of Wight. everyone's going nuts over it Jed like, Wells that, painted that's that. how hyped mm -hmm. people he, are over it Jed Wells painted a <laughs> massive teapot it's amazing From, so we were last talking about when you went out to the states and yeah. if you wanted to be involved in it and you you said you were happy about that you just took it there and it's been smashing oh, well, it yeah I'm, I'm i was just a team skater i wasn't i wasn't like a, 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 a i'm not director i'm not involved in it. i'm not involved anyway but jeremy jeremy would say well yeah you are but but well, that's you are, only, yeah, you're that's only for it. skating yeah but yeah. that's only just for skating i'm not but that's part a, of the business or nothing. But that's a testament that yeah. to Jeremy, yeah. like all these years, you will talk to him over the phone. He could have yeah. went to the States and forgot everyone back home, like some people would. But the fact that he's gone no, and he's he like he talked to everyone. It's it, he's rad. Yeah, it's important. It's amazing. Um, yeah. He's um he's kept in touch with absolutely everybody and uh, Yeah, that's good. Yeah, he's done a lot he's done a lot of good out in America and mm. across the globe, you know, with, with skating. Yeah, Who were sure. some of your favourite death box riders and favourite flip riders? Oof. I know they've had a good team, but there's got to be like a pinnacle. <laughs> I mean, everyone might say Tom Penny. Yeah. Not Which allowed to say Tom Penny. <laughs> yeah. But like when you're riding for death box, who was it in the van that you were like, they're fucking oh, good? Ryan Monaghan. I used to, I, I, I thought he was so rad. Man. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Monaghan. I don't know mm. if you mm. know. I know the name, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a guy from... New York, I think. Um, and he, he came over, ended up helping Jeremy and... and uh, the way everyone did as soon as they came over. It was, it was, it was a good laugh, but he, he could skate really well. Yeah. He yeah. just float around, I mean. Did he turn pro? Yeah. he done, done a really cool board for him. Oh, my God. A Malcolm X board. Just some big X like that. I remember it now. Yeah, yeah. 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 Amazing. Yeah, I bet I did all right that one, didn't it? <laughs> uh, well, he said, Jeremy sold boards, but you're not talking like telephone numbers or anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess they all Oh, that'll all pay right. that bill. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of, that's the impression I get. Credit cards like, that don't work. Yeah. Was it all like that? It was like, oh, we sold some boards, so now we can get something to eat. Yeah, rent's covered. Yeah. We, we, we use the fruit machine to try and pay for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's for real though. Yeah. That is for yeah. real. It's hilarious how 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 sort of financially low the business went, but it still had its spirit. Like yeah. everyone was still well, don't worry about that, we'll still kill ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's still I think it's still the same for most young people when they, they get into skating. Mm -hmm. They just they just love it. Yeah. yeah, you got to be in it. it. Yeah, I mean, no yeah. matter how good or what, it doesn't matter, yeah. does it? Really, it's just yeah. all the moment you step up, step foot on it, you're like, "Well, here we go." Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's good. Isn't it? <laughs> it's a good laugh. Um, just who's a good your laugh. sorry? Uh, skateboarding's just a good laugh, really. Yeah, really. Yeah. Well, you know a lot of I mean? people it's... take it too seriously these days. I know. I know there's but a lot that... of gatekeepers out there, but you got to remember, at the end of the day, essentially, it is a wooden toy. And you've got to take it for that. Yeah. Wait, hold on a sec. We need to talk about who's sponsoring this episode of the podcast, the podcast that you are enjoying listening to right now. Toby, who's sponsoring this episode? Today's sponsor is Camp Rubicon Skate Camps, which have been around since 2006. They are active for eight weeks a year, so you need to get in while you can. Campers have been traveling from all around the globe for almost a decade for the ultimate skateboarding holiday camp experience. And this year, they will see the campers head over to Europe, to have a little skate in Barcelona, Barcelona. And even the Netherlands for about a week. Barcelona. Say it. Barcelona. Barcelona. Guests in the past have included the likes of Chris Vile, Paul Regan, Tommy Corbridge, Alex Takuna, Adam Keats, Aaron Jago. They've also had veterans like Andy Scott. My homie Nicky Howes and Craig Smedley. Craig. Included in the camp is accommodation, travel, food and entry fees to any parks. So whilst you're at Camp Rubicon, they also aim to skate two parks a day, which means 10 parks a week. That also includes some of the most famous and popular indoor and outdoor skate parks known to man. Okay. So overall, it just sounds like a sick week where you can skate with some incredible skateboarders and meet like-minded people. So to all the viewers and listeners out there that want to find out more information about Camp Rubicon, where can they search? CampRubicon.com, and that's Rubicon spelled R-U-B-I-C-O-N. 
They are also on Instagram at Camp Rubicon and you can send them an email, info at camprubicon.com. Did you know emails don't get wet like letters? I never your, knew that. Anyway. Are you on email? Back to the show. Are you on email? You simply have to be these days, don't you? Back to the show. Last time I was sort of repping or anything like that was about 10 years ago. Mm. And I don't know how if there's more skate shops now. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I think it's probably less. Oh, probably less. Yeah. There's oh. not many. I think oh, there was, really? I think like <laughs> 10 years ago, there was a More. peak in skate shops. Yeah, maybe. But a lot went with the re like recession times, I think. So there struggled. So there is still that wave then. There's like a 10 year wave of. Kind of. I mean, a lot of, a lot of people got the wave with COVID this time because people yeah. were at home and had time for the first time in a long time. People had, time and around to yeah. do things they I think wanted to do covid yeah. so, as fucked as it was saved a lot of yeah. stuff for skateboarding because everyone started doing it some people stuck to it mm. and then you've got skateboarding in the olympics as well yeah which is yeah which I, don't, is, I don't know whether that's actually anyone gives a shit about that like no but I'd, you know I it's not it, like we sold loads of sky brown boards we probably sold as many as you would do if she wasn't in the Olympics. I don't think it's directly related. Skateboarding never really needed no, the Olympics. No, but yeah, I exactly. think the Olympics might have needed skateboarding. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's usually the quote, yeah, isn't it? I think that's how it went. And that's yeah, been the really. quote of a lot of skating. Like, they, we don't need them. They need us. Yeah. But skate, think, skating's always an up and down wave, isn't it? With like shops and your company's doing well good in January. And then by December that year, it can just be like, oh, Christ, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's up and down. It's I mean, very... it's got to be fucking hard running a skate shop now. Oh, Christ, yeah. that's what I mean. Like for Paul to run roller snakes the way it is and where he's got to today. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's really good. But well, I mean, Paul's always it's... been really good at putting things back, like paying riders, putting all that stuff we showed you outside. That's all because of, you know, we did all right during COVID. So there was a bit of money to helping out with the helping the, the local scene, like, funding this. Yeah, I mean, this yeah, has this cost is way more money than we thought it was going to man hours. And Paul, Paul's and put a lot of money into <laughs> skateboarding oh, yeah. and to build not only an indoor ramp, an indoor skate park and outdoor, like, that no one gets charged to use. Yeah, it's all free you, to use when the like, shows right. you'll, you'll still get some people that are like, yeah. Well, but it's like well, they can get fucked I don't well, care I don't really care I mean like, you see you gotta love it you see the stuff pop up on the internet you know people <laughs> talking shit but I, was, I don't care don't everyone gets shit spoke about everything yeah, like, I just don't care anymore yeah it doesn't matter does yeah, it? if you want to sit yeah. there and talk shit you can see yeah. it just whatever I, I, I still find it rad though like I'm I'm, I'm gonna be as I say I'm gonna be 54 uh, this year yeah it's uh and I, st I still have the same vibe in my head about skateboarding. Yeah. It's the same as years ago. Go but you skating and have a laugh. Yeah, but you see all the... You see so many people who are actually just doing it. Like, try. oh, I want to learn to skateboard. Oh, okay. It's really like it's so many people just want it. Like, random people. I'm in my mm. 30s. I'm in my 40s. I'm, I'm 12 or what, you know. And so I, I was teaching people and kids to skate in catering. And some of them are like five and six. Aren't they? Mm. Yeah, we have a skate school here. We've we've had kids four years old. We've had a guy who's partially blind in his early forties. Oh wow. We've got go. people who are like I just want to check it out. It's just, yeah, yeah, you know, Great. they're coming to it late. It's, yeah. No, it but it doesn't matter, does it? No. What like in skateboarding it's sort it, of the yeah. all encompassing yeah. it should <clears throat> be all welcoming activity. It's more mm. about the feeling, not yeah. what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe you stand on a board and just start going around and then carving. Yeah. A little grind, a little ollie or whatever. That's it. Well. Are you, how often are you skating at the minute? Uh, I try to once a week. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a very. When was the last uh, time you padded up on a vert ramp? Oh, God. Uh, last year, I think it was actually. Yeah. yeah last Where year. was that? At Greg's ramp? God. No, X. Did you go to there? Yeah, I did go to Greg's. I yeah. seem to remember seeing you there, yeah. Yeah, it's. Just, I don't know. I need I need to spend time on a vert ramp. Yeah. Sort of. I, I think I prefer just cruising about and small yeah. ramps and bowls and whatever. Mm. But, I'll, but I'll have a go if if I can if my knee will let me. Yeah. So what is what is with your knee then? You fucked just, it early nineties. Yeah. And you just never I've, got it looked at. And no, I've, I I broke it and I've got it repaired and I've got two titanium 
bolts in there yeah. to keep it together and it's still gives you shit still baggy well, yeah, I could, yeah. You know, got, um doctor said you get over 50 might you might it might slow you down a bit it's exactly uh, it's just like this morning on the way in i got out of bed i was like oh it's hurting now but yeah. i got out of bed and i was like no, that's it's, it's hurting now because that's your uh, I didn't know if I podcaster's knee. It's not skating. <laughs> podcaster's <laughs> knee. Well, anyway, so um, yeah, it's, it's, so it just yeah, it's, it's what can I do? Yeah, age. You know, I mean, yeah. Sean, Sean Goff, he's he's what must be fifty-eight. He's about two hundred and seventy <laughs> something years old, isn't he? And he's he's done his shoulder and all sorts of yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's and, battered. And he, you know, he still cruises about and occasionally it's in your blood, though, isn't it? It's not, you, you always you can't be stop. Cruising. You just, yeah. you know, I've seen him in pain, and he's like, oh, I've, got, I've got, I just want to, I just got to do this. Yeah, mm. I've, I've seen many people in pain, mm. but they still, they still shelve it. No, yeah, I'm escape. <laughs> it's that thing, in it, of like, you know, you can do it. It's in your mind that you can do it, but yeah. like the longer you're alive, the more your body doesn't permit you to. Can we just do it? Go yeah. back to um, I, I always remember reading in one of the mags that you invented the mute fast plant. Oh, I don't think is I that right? I don't think did you I read that? that? I remember doing them. But yeah, I'm not I, sure you're, if I... you're one of the first people to do them in the oh, UK, really? maybe. Oh, maybe. I just remember seeing it in the mags because you were always good at. Japan's because you had that flex uh, and, the, and yeah, tweaking, mute, mute master of contortion, yeah. bit of that, tuck yeah. knee inverts, yeah. all that kind of <laughs> shit. You had the bendy legs going on, didn't you? Yeah. But were there were there any tricks that you did uh, invent back then? The th it was a few things. I, I wouldn't say invent. I'd say sort of maybe develop. I don't know. Yeah. But um, a, a body varial, but three sixty body varial. So right. you sort of you do a cab. You do a cavalarial yeah. and then sort of like halfway in between, you can either grab the board, I can't remember now, you, you at it, you grab it, mute and then put it backside. Right. Mm -hmm. So I remember learning oh, I that see, one. I, I know and that was quite, that about. was kind of mellow sort of thing. And then I remember learning it with the other hand, Indo. Mm. And it took me a while to do because it's, it's really weird, but I've seen people do it now, like mm -hmm. holding a beer, you know, like whilst they're doing it, the mm -hmm. kids these days. But, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> but at the time, I remember doing a 360 body barrel like that. So I yeah. never see anyone do it. I didn't see Tony Hawk do it or uh, Jeff Phillips or, yeah, I don't know, you know, back in them days. Because I, I was doing that around about 89 eight, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Who were your inspirations around that time? Oh, pretty much everybody uh, that skated, you know. Yeah. yeah. I saw, I saw obviously Tony Hawk, Mark Gonzalez, um, Jeff Phillips, <laughs> yeah. Jeff Phillips, uh, Neil Blender. Fucking hell, we're, we're rest big, of the power team, Lance. Big yeah. fan of Neil, we Neil, are Neil Blender around here. here aren't we? Yeah, Fucking Neil Blender. Blender. Big fan so, of Neil Blender. He popped up on someone's Instagram story the other day. He was at some premiere. And he doesn't look like he's Asia at all. I think he might be an alien. Like, <laughs> sorry, I looked up to all the, all them sort of thing. Yeah. You know, the yeah. big American dudes, basically. Yeah, it was just um, Jeff Grosso. Yeah. My God. Yeah. I I remember standing next to him. I was like, <laughs> it was just so funny. Just looked looked at him, we're just laughing at each other. Yeah. <laughs> Massive, like, <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, amazing. Uh, to, to skate with him, Jason Jesse. Right yeah. to skate with him. I times. was watching oh, Jason Jesse's Consolidated Kings of Promotion <laughs> part yesterday <laughs> to that Devo song. The first line that he does, his airs are fucking massive. Oh, yeah. Like, insane. He just does great stuff. Styled front side ollies and just, you know, half of it is all kind of regular stuff. A backside air, a frontside air, but it's just the way it's the way it's certain done. Certain people do things. So it's like, oh yeah, it's all about it's it's art. Yeah, you know I mean, like Chris Nassau. It's, Christian it's you know, how the way you do he does stuff, it. or Steve Cavallaro, or yeah, or, yeah. style yeah. matters. You know, like Lester Kasai. I remember having one of my first boards was the Lester Kasai mm. board. Yeah, was that a tra when he, a tracker? Was it a tracker board? 
Might Didn't Tracker come think, out with boards around yeah. that time? Yeah, I think so. He was on Tracker trucks though, wasn't he? Just saying Tracker yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tracker. Yeah, yeah. yeah tracker I, I got on Tracker. Or they gave me I was going to ask tracker. you about your other sponsors back in the day. Tracker and you, you were on Gold Gold Wing. Wing. Yeah. Wing. Like, was that a direct hook up from Stan? Yeah, yeah. That was was that something right. Jeremy oh, threw out? Yeah. It, uh, they only lasted like a few months or something. Mm. Was right. that the magnesium? Yeah, I had some what of them. They were they, they grind the, down. <laughs> magnesium something or others. They gave them a fancy name, didn't they? They were expensive. Big, chunky. Plastic, yeah. I've got, plate. I've got some of them. Yeah. So. Did you get sent loads of them when they came out? No, just like a couple of sets. Yeah. And, and uh, but they, they give us royalties. Well, it must like thirty or forty quid or something yeah. like that each month. I was like, wow. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. You know, I wasn't in it to try and win it, but I remember Jeremy being like, oh, you know, you need to capitalise as much as you can. You need to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, do this that, and the other. I was like, well. Were you, you know, on Airwalk as well at some point? Yeah, yeah, got something going on there, which was. Mm. Five forty Fahrenheit with the lace covers. Yeah. Oh I yeah. Use those. I've got a pair of them. So Brand new pair of those. Don't touch them. They'll probably disintegrate now. They're that no, hard. well, they're still as new as they are. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of the rubber light, um, degrades now. Well, it? the glue dries, isn't yeah, it? And no, it like... <laughs> oh, right. So, yeah, you'll oh, probably, you'll probably pick it up and it'll go like <laughs> sand in your fingers. <laughs> Wasn't it? There was a, I saw a video of Ellington going through some of his America <laughs> Pro shoes and <sighs> gets them out of the box and just twists them and they just turn to dust. Did oh, you see right. the video Don Brown put up of all the old S in Ameri um, America shoes in the... Must be the Soltec warehouse, and he had like crates full of it. No, they're gonna be. I mean, they'd be going to be like, long. And he kept opening them, and some of the soles were like crusted yeah. off. And he said yeah. he's reissuing a bunch of them. But mm. um, after Deathbox and when that changed to Flip, did mm. you ride for anyone else board company wise? Did no. you? No, nothing. No. I did. I just any hookups or no? It was just like I literally just um, uh, Don Brown. And legend Don Brown yeah. and the A4 crowd, they sort of said, Oh, like Darren and, and um, Alan said, Oh, do you want to do some rep in here? I was like, Yeah, because my leg was still just trying to figure out what was going on with it. And, this is uh, when he was in Warrington and A4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just I, I ended A4 up repping like with them. Tech UK and Europe, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, that was it. Started repping for them, and um, yeah, it was just a good, good little thing. Just, yeah. Uh, did you move up to Warrington for that job or? No, I was already there. Already, already, already I was already there, there yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just like, um, yeah, it was good. How good was the rapping game for you? Yeah, it was good fun. Yeah. I couldn't do it now. It's just too... too a too, lot of miles, right? Yeah, I'm not... Yeah. I don't like travelling so much. So. I so. always <laughs> remember speaking to Seb. Seb oh, Palmer. Seb, yeah. Sumo, Jeff, how yeah, funny he was when, when Dossett comes to town, he <laughs> skates in, <laughs> drops his bag of samples and says, see you later, I'm going down Dev Green. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that, Dev yeah. Green earlier how yeah. that is still a park that's built <laughs> like a, an early 2000s demo park where mm. banks are like this mm. that was uh, yeah I was there on Sunday that's a scary park and it's fucking rotting oh, as okay. well I mean it's like, old it's now, rotting it? apart it needs oh just a touch up like the, the cracks are like mm, big enough to age, kill you oh okay like oh, absolutely boy. big enough to kill you should we talk about um SCUK and the boards you you've had out. Yeah, that. So, for anyone who doesn't know SCUK Skateboard Collectors UK yeah. on Facebook, yeah, <coughs> uh, I have my uh, mixed emotions about that Facebook group after uh, I got kicked out once for asking right. how much a board is worth. But I'm back okay. in there now. I managed right. to sneak back in. So <laughs> I who, might... who's the winner now? I might, oh, yeah. I might, I might try it. Um, oh, it's, it's, I mean, look. I think I got kicked out because they did a raffle and a, a full length video I made and oh. bought on DVD was part of the <laughs> raffle. And I put, yeah, I'll, I'll put two quid down on this raffle and, 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 and won it. And they were like, you've won. And I was like, I put, oh, like I was only joking. I made that video. I have 200 <laughs> sat in the box. Bang, straight the way, that's it. They don't I like was it. gone. I was kicked. I get it. There's a lot of uh, people in their sort oh. of the time of their lives where they don't want to take shit from anyone. I get that. I'm the same. But it's quite funny. But so anyway, they do reissue boards. Well, it's Graham Hill, isn't it? Yeah. Good I mean, graphics too. Yeah. I'll well, give them that. For, it wasn't a, a, a reissue graphic. It was just like Sorry, a, yeah, a just mashup, mashup, a mashup of a reissue, yeah. if you like. Yeah. Of two graphics. Yeah, of two graphics. Yeah. And... Um, 
yeah, it's pretty cool. It kind of worked. He, he, he contacted me and I was like, yeah, if you, if you want to do something because death box ain't happening, but at the moment, so... Um, You've got room to do it yeah, if you want to do fine, it. That's fine, yeah. yeah. So does Lucian so. Hendricks had a board out on there as well? Yeah, he? he said was... Lucian and Dave Allen had right, a board. Yeah. And I think Greg Noick might have had a board Yeah, as I well. seem to remember Noick. Fucking hell, we need to get Greg Noick on here. Oh, Talking yeah. about... We need to get on to him. Talk... Why have we not got older Greg Noick yet? Greg is... Oh, my Legend. God, he's a master. Not, I hate that word, he's but he is... He's incredible. <laughs> Talking yeah. about Greg Nowick when you were saying about his vert ramp, I'm sure I heard that he built a vert ramp just because he wanted to learn how to skate vert. <laughs> like, yeah. But he but you watch <laughs> him skate and he's not slowing down. Oh no, no. Like, he's, he skates he's going fast, all the way. Flips in and flips out of shit. <laughs> he's and, still got the quickest feet, isn't he? Like Oh, he's insane. Just unbelievable. He can do lots of tricks. Yeah. He's yeah, I yeah, mean yeah, yeah. He I love to see him on some, the ramp here. He needed to be on something big. Man, he's so good. When I see footage of him, I don't yeah. expect what's going to happen. And then it happens and I'm like, oh, okay. And you, he looks tall as well. Like, dude yeah. looks tall and he dude can, is, and he yeah. can <laughs> grab boards. <laughs> One thing that's just come into my mind and what I want to talk about quickly. When Radlands first opened, there was oh, the footage of you yes. there on, on the first vert sessions yeah. with Rune. That's right. Was it, it was in one of the Roller Snakes video logs. I can't remember which one it was. The first... The first one. It might, yeah, video log one. Yeah. Might be that one. That's it, yeah. Have a look, grab uh, it off the shelf. But that vert ram looks so pristine. Oh, Brand Tim, new. Payne, Tim Payne had come just over, bought, hadn't he? Uh, sorry, just built it. And yeah. we'd just come back from Hamburg in North Germany. Yeah. We were all a bit dazed and confused, but we woke up the moment we saw, <laughs> saw the skate park. Oh, my God. Because uh, was yeah. Jeremy still based in Wellingborough at that yeah, point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was basically next door to you, wasn't it? Like yeah, you've got an indoor close. vert ramp. Pretty close, yeah. So I was yeah, there I a lot, fridge. an awful lot, every other day, really. So um, it, within it, within that edit, there's you doing a 540. Yeah. But it looks like you don't ride it out. The cut's too quick. But you must have done fives, right? No, that's, I think that might have been ruined. Was it? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it no, was. No, do, I've done yeah. yeah, yeah. I was sure it was you. It's like, I remember... On different We'll ramps. check it out. We'll cut this out. You don't what? No, you can say but Because whilst we're talking about 540s, who's the first person you've seen do one? Because there's a bit of controversy between... Was it Ali? Or was it Sean that did the first 540 oh. in the UK? Because well, a lot of people say Ali, and then people say Sean. Well, I, I've i got a photo of me doing a 540 at Romford in 1986, I think it is. Okay, yeah. So oh. we might all be wrong. It might be Pete does it. But I, I, I slug. I, it was a crouch landing on that. But I still made it. To but the a landing, side. still a landing. Did have a vert ramp there? But it had no, no coping. I don't know how I made it. <laughs> I don't know. How, I, I, and the photo. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't. I don't know if I got a photo with me. But I'll, I'll find it and I'll send it to yeah. you. Yeah. And we like yeah. this sort of stuff. Yeah. 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 When, yeah. When so you... I'm sure I posted it on Instagram. So do you remember having sessions with Sean doing fives, learning fives, going mm. through that process? Uh, not really. So you just went out and just did it. occasionally, just occasionally, I'd make a f a couple that day yeah. or something like that, or maybe one that day or or something. But it weren't like I th I wouldn't session it. Yeah, I'd rather just skate. Yeah, like yeah. just yeah, yeah. You because know, I, I, it I don't know n nowadays, it just seems to be really like kind of regular to do a 540 doesn't it's like it? a go-to right. trick isn't it it's, yeah. it's almost like a, that fucking a setup coming, trick isn't yeah it? almost there's that I fucking kid that did two 900s, 900s back to back oh god like 900 yeah. he yeah. looks 900. like he's just got out of like nappies and he's doing 900s yeah. back to back like he back. tucks it in like a little cannonball kid. Yeah, it's insane I've, oh no I've been watching that day do you watch uh, Leonardo the Italian vert oh, skater kid Leonardo da Vinci I think it's Tony Hawk's Tony Hawk's Tony Hawk is sorting him out with birdhouse. Oh, uh, I think. But he does proper alley oop McTwists like. Oh, a high as well. Backside is about twelve foot high. Uh, Max Schaff, is it? No, not Max Schaff. Um, oh, Tom, Sh Tom, Tom Schaff. Tom Schaff. Tom Schaff. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, he's fucking ridiculous. But he's shout out to Max Schaff <laughs> because he was fucking good Cheers as well. Guy. Max Schaff is over here <laughs> every now and then for the the Dice <laughs> magazine. Motorbike why don't you hit horsey. up horsey, horsey? and get Can't why, my voice is going horsey why don't you <coughs> why don't you hit up horsey and see if we can get max schaff up i'd love to i mean ronnie sandoval's over in july i've asked to get him on but no was the answer 
What's no. it? What's he over for? <laughs> the same thing. The the, the, oh, the okay. motorbike ride that Dice Mag do. Well, fuck you guys if you don't want to come on. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't so much. It wasn't a route. No, it was. Um, yeah. Sorry. So yeah, Radlands. That that must have been another kind of because at the time there wasn't. No. Pioneer. In Pioneer. Park, we that was about it. Was Pioneer, it? and uh, that was fantastic. Uh, yeah. Rad, it, but still going strong. The Pioneer. Chris Hintz and. His, his two sons, Damien and Damien, they really want to get a skate park going together, mm-hmm. and almost like at the time, we're like, I mean, that's an amazing thing to get a, a, a an indoor skate park, but mm. but but like realistically, you can have maybe is it gonna like is it gonna work? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because there was that uh, again. It was. I was going sort of quiet skateboarding again. Um, Apparently it was so busy 19... in the first few months of opening that they give you money back to leave earlier on your session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when it, when it first what? opened. Yeah, because was, there was so many people waiting to go in. That if you oh. left early, they'd... Because they only, could only have X amount of people in there. But, Although oh. the, that went to shit as soon as the British champs went on because it was rammed in there. Oh, God. It was fucking insane. Uh, it was, I know. You just couldn't <laughs> get anywhere. It was, it but was when, people spilling out onto the street course and it was still happening. But when it, as I say, when it first opened, it was, it was you know, numbers were coming in very slowly. Yeah. Because, oh, okay. as, as I say, the industry was definitely... We're about to song. Uh, Again, yeah. it's, like, yeah. it's like almost a ten-year yeah, cycle. It, it does do yeah, that, yeah. that's why I said to you, like, you know, how is it the industry these days? Yeah, fucked. Right. right. There's very few people. Is I it mean, flooded we're, with too many boards? Well, too many. Yeah, I mean, you know, products. We, too we many. get offered a lot of stuff that people can't sell. Too many products for two little shops yeah. and outlets to sell it. It yeah. is such a tough industry. Isn't yeah, it? it really is. And and like I've I've not been involved in. Well, I've been involved with skateboarding, but just going skating and, as mm. I say, painting people skateboarding. Um, it's sort of, I don't know, it's, the industry is, 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 I'm sure one day soon, you know, it will just really explode. Yeah, you know, like you say, it's gone in the Olympics. Yeah. Um, it's definitely put skateboarding a bit more on the map. Oh yeah, there's more skaters than ever. It's just that there's more yeah. places than ever to buy skateboards, mm. and the internet has brought down the the boundaries oh, of countries, God, yes. so people still can order stuff in right. from abroad and get it cheaper. You know, right. if they don't get hit with an import duty charge. And, um, yeah. Let's talk about what you're doing now. Oh, skating what I'm a bit. Doing now. Yeah, doing, doing now and artwork. And and still skating. Yeah, and now you're doing some art. Yeah, I've been painting. Talk to us about that. Well, I just find that. Artwork I've been doing when I was a kid, sort of thing, mm. even before I was skating, sort of thing. And um, I just remember drawing pictures of people at Harrow. Uh, I've, I've got somebody at a pool, but I didn't draw it there, I'll draw it when I got back home, mm. sort of thing. So from, your, from your brain box? Yeah. And I thought, oh, we should, uh, <coughs> we should take this, take it a bit further, sort of thing. Mm. And obviously, um, as I say, I'm a bit older now. I sort of had time to think about exactly how I'm gonna do that, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, just decided to buy some paint, buy some canvases, and just go for it, really. And yeah, and just done quite a few paintings so far of different skaters. Yeah, but I'm trying to go, trying to go back in time with it, you know, from the very start of it. Using art as a time machine. Yeah, that's and, a good quote for and you. And also. Know, Good so, on that. <laughs> also, also concentrating on what happened here in England mm. because I think the moment we think of, I don't know, the seventies skating, we automatically are viewed straight across the water. I think mm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So I'm thirty odd paintings deep, and there's only there's no American in. The, well, there's one person so far, Jeremy Henderson. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is there's a there's a lot of skate heroes then that kept skateboarding alive then, mm-hmm. kept them skate parks open then. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it'd be, there would have been car parks in the 70s then for skate parks. Yeah. yeah. Had they had not, you know. <coughs> so they carried on. And um, I just thought, yeah, rather than just paint random stuff, you want to paint 
some of your real into. history. So yeah. that's what I've done. Heroes, are, yeah. Yeah. You just... mentioned your painting Sue Hazel tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to try and yeah. start getting together a paint Sue, Sue yeah. Hazel. Yeah, we need to get yeah, Sue Hazel uh, on. I painted one other female skater, uh, Sheena, Sheena B. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's uh, there's a picture of her doing like a front side carve on this ramp. Nice. So I just painted her. Sort of like mm -hmm. Where can people see all your art? Is it just on, on my Instagram. On Instagram, yeah. yeah. They're all there, clear as day. I've done a little bit of music, just tried yeah. to funk it up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> just being, being creative. Yeah, just, uh, you know, and it's, um, as I say, I do go skating, but I do suffer with it. Like my hip hurts and stuff because I'm trying to. Well, you've got to remember you've been doing me. it for. Yeah. 40, probably 40 years. Yeah, 40 something years. Well, uh, human beings are not supposed to be skating. Beaten into the ground <laughs> for yeah. decade after decade. You know? yeah. I don't know what we're supposed to be doing, but I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna carry on until I can't paint anymore. Yeah. So obviously, hopefully, that'll be quite a few, quite a few thousand paintings ahead. Yeah. Because yeah. there's that many skaters. What from, triggered the from inspiration England? to start the project? Well, yeah. As, as being a kid, I. I I'd, I'd done it on card and then on to uh, just on the paper and I thought what's the point in putting a picture on paper it's just it's on canvas yeah so everything you're painting is on canvas yeah, yeah oh yeah yeah or yeah. on concrete <coughs> I've, I've, I've experimented with some of the artwork on concrete mm. just to have a look see what it looks like so just do you think see, you'd so. kind of put it all into one big art show at some point. I'd love to. I'd actually like love invite to some of the legends around that All the painted. people have painted, yeah. Yeah, um, and get um, them all in one place. Kind yeah. of like the London Calling thing, yeah. like get people in one place. Yeah. What? Well, just on that note, I mean, why um, why have you not had a board out on 40? I thought you would have yeah, had a board Yeah, I was good. I was thinking that. Everyone else seems to have 40 one, Skate Co. Yeah. Like Habgood just had a board. Powley's had one. Um, I might be a little bit detached. I'm not sure I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's just For, a brand 40? named at over 40s. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, over, I'm over 50s, though. Maybe yeah. it's, oh, okay. maybe there it's over 50. There should be another one there. Let's do 50 skate code. Hi, it's Toby here, your mum's favourite presenter for The Brain Drain Show. I'm here to talk to you about roller snakes, and I've got an absolutely fantastic double-digit discount code to give you, so stay tuned. Roller Snakes was founded in 1985 by Sir Paul Haynes, which makes it one of the UK's oldest skater-owned stores. Roller Snakes stocks all the shit-hot brands, including Adidas, Brixton, Carhartt, DC, Element, Independent, Levi's, New Balance, Palace, Polar, Santa Cruz, Spitfire, Thrasher, Volcom and Vans, and many, many more. At Roller Snakes, there is a free-to-use indoor skate park, indoor mini ramp, and outdoor skate park, which I designed, and it's really good, and everyone loves it, and if you don't, then you suck, don't come here. We also put on numerous events throughout the year where you can turn up for free and win loads of prizes. Roller Snakes have given us a discount code for Brain Drain listeners. Enter Brain Drain 10 at checkout for 10% off your next order. Minimum spend £30, terms and conditions apply. Go to rollersnakes.co.uk and buy all of your stuff and things immediately, if not sooner. That was me, your mum's new best friend. And I'm looking into the camera now, and hopefully looking into your mum's soul. How is your mum? Tell your mum stop texting me. Over and out. Goodbye. Just going back to your uh, art, Pete. Yeah. If you want to do an art show, you're more than welcome to use the space here. Do one here. Oh, really? You could have like the indoor park. You could take wow. it over and just do Pete Dossett's art I'll show. Fi I'll film it yeah. for the night. Do wow. do like a do video that, for you. You know, we're here for free of charge. It. Yeah. Wow. Maybe pe maybe paint me doing a backside down of vert <laughs> ramp because I've never done one. So you can be I like, mean, you know, there's there's lots of um, <laughs> yeah. We do lots of events. We do the Dadlands stuff. Have you seen Dadlands? It's yeah. So uh, Volta Roll. We've got the Volta wow. Roll open on wow. May 18th. Wow. It's that kind of crowd. Maybe you could do an art show here. We can move some fantastic. of the shop out of the way and put some art in there. Pete does it art show yeah. at the Volta Roll. We, you I know, don't, plenty we, of scope to do stuff. If you want to do something, just let us know. We could do wow. something like <coughs> on that indoor skate park because it's all wood. Yeah. You can hang things yeah. all round and then cut off that street course and mm. have a mini ramp session so the yeah. art's around it yeah well we can do all that kind of stuff i'll film the evening and make a nice video for you so it would be really yeah. i'd be more than keen it's, to just get, it's getting all your canvases here from south end on yeah that, that's well I'm, uh, I'll, I'll uh I'll, I'll figure that one out but um but you yeah, do it, I, just let us know. I, I, I do plan to try and do something like mm. maybe, yeah 
that would be amazing. And also something maybe around London area yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. But I, again, I've not figured it out, figured it right out because I'm. No, I, I it's still a process, need to, isn't it? It's I still need to paint the people from the eighties. I've got to paint myself as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm one of these people in it, so. I'll, can you paint Abby sure. for me, please? Could you when you eventually I will with his yeah, with yeah, his long it. arms on the canvas, <laughs> like in a Kate Bush style, like Abby, but with like with like long wobbly arms. <laughs> when you do the photo of you, yeah. can you do that Nebworth Judo air? That'd be sick. Because that's ah uh, yeah, I don't know. I really like haven't, iconic, I, I haven't even looked at myself because yeah. I'm still looking at other people to paint at the moment, like Sue Hazel. Yeah, I finally got that. She definitely wants that photo. So, because um, I had another one of her a bit earlier doing a high jump, and she looked so cool. I know the photo. I know. Was, oh. it, in one, was it in Rad or something? Or Black and white action? shot straight. Yeah. Straight on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. the one. I just thought I'd love to paint that, but she's like, oh, a bit oh, later. I'm doing this, doing that. Yeah, That's yeah. hard. Where yeah. have you been contacting her through Instagram? Everybody for Instagram. Because it would be worth dropping her a message because it'd be so good to have someone with that heritage and being the first female skateboarder as well because she can really talk about the female history in skateboarding. Yeah. It'd be we'll really good. When you speak to a teller, we'll be in touch. Yeah, yeah, get yeah definitely. Good. She's, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's loads of people from that. I skate with her quite a bit as yeah. well. Is she, is she She's down still skating? Your way or... Oh, we said no, to me South Sea. South Sea, yeah. I think. I think. I'm not 100% yeah, sure. Yeah, South Coast somewhere. I remember it being Brighton or Portsmouth or somewhere like that. Mm. But um, anyway, I think we're kind of... Before we bring it to a close, do you have a favourite photo that you've shot in your history of skateboarding of yourself? Oh, like a photo you look at and you're like, that was a good day. What one that Pete's... Uh, just a photo of Pete himself that you've oh, shot Pete, that uh, you've been published. That oh, you're like, I see. Uh, Th it's probably one of your favourite I haven't really I, I, I don't really I don't know I don't I don't really have any favourite photos or, yeah. or anything like that because that I, contents page one's good because of the skyline in the background and yeah, everything it's kind of almost yeah. silhouetted right that's, that's one sun, of my favourites yeah that's like a golden hour photo that yeah right. it, I mean they're just they're permanently burnt into my retinas those never <laughs> just, just seen a photo there that Pasty took that. Justin Ashby took oh, that yeah. photo. Is that an adrenaline alley? Yeah. That vert ramp's gone now, hasn't it? They got rid of it oh, for a yeah. fucking rhythm section. Yeah. Rhythm? For scooters. A vert ramp is a rhythm section, surely. For scooters like that. <laughs> vert ramp is a big rhythm section. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that one. There you go. Contents page. Yeah, mm. that photo is so... It's just so good, isn't it? They, were they the Def Box crowbar rails on there? I think so, yeah. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were chunky bits of plastic. Yeah, yeah. Those rails look amazing. Mental. What wheels are you riding there? I think they're the teapot. Uh, not teapot. It's the um, Dodo. dodos, yeah. They, I didn't think they came in the red, did they? Oh, oh look at that, Pete. you got a nose bone. Are they oh, the yeah, airwalks yeah, yeah, as yeah. well? The high top <coughs> airwalks? I think. I don't know. Uh, look at that. Yeah. Recap knee pads. You need so, them in there, right? This yeah. is. You that do. nose bone you've got on there, is that drilled directly just to the bottom yeah. of your board? Because me and Sean make our own little nose bones because some of them, where they used to lap over your nose, used to snap off easy. Right, right. But right. that one looks like it's just fully drilled on the bottom of your nose, right? Yeah, I just screwed it in a couple of times. Look at that nose bone. That is, <laughs> that picture's making me horny. Did you, <laughs> did you keep any of your riders from back in the day? Any of the boards you'd ridden? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. I actually sold a, cu a couple. No, yeah, I had two actually. I sold them years ago though, mm. for like peanuts. Isn't it? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's just you should do something like art related, art show related, and anything nostalgic you've got, and just drill it all up on the wall, boards, art, and just mm. it'd be so good to host a night of that. I'd be, yeah, like Toby said, it'd be an honour to do something like that. Yeah, um, well, shall we round it up on? Yeah, on I mean, that I one? could I could sit here and go through these old photos for fucking hours. Yeah, because it's right up my uh, Straza. Right up your Straza. Yeah, but uh, well, if yeah, anyone knows where Toby Straza <laughs> might be, <laughs> get your we'll Straza we'll message. But if we could have a round of applause <laughs> in the <laughs> studio <laughs> audience, please. Thanks for coming, Pete. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming all the fucking way from Mate. South End. Oh, it's not long. Nice. That's not a long way. That's Thank not you a very much. Thank you. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. We're going to go skate now.
Pete's going to do a Smith, uh, whatever the fuck she <laughs> called it. So, yeah, one more yeah. round of applause. Come on, let's get on it. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's go set up this art gallery.